Dear friends, today we have with us a very special guest. Today we have with us Mrs. Universe Australia official, Dee Mukherjee, who is going to be representing Australia in the upcoming Mrs. Universe contest that's going to be taking place in Sydney soon. Dee, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Pallavi. Yeah. Uh, Dee, tell us a bit about this contest and, uh, you know, generally speaking, how are your preparations going? Because you're going to be representing Australia in the Mrs. Universe contest that's going to be happening soon. So tell us a bit about that. Sure. So this uh, pageant happened last year in December. Mm -hmm. um, so we had to say there are a number of things that we need to do in these pageants. So there is, a, there is a talent round, then you have got your advocacy that you need to present. Then you have on stage performances, which is basically there's like a swimwear round or an active round. And then you have got your gown rounds, then you have got your q &A. So they basically do a lot of screening before they give you the title or confer the title. Mm -hmm. So we have gone through all of that last year and um, I was, um, representing India at that time um, and I ended up uh, getting the first runner-up for Mrs. Universe Australia uh, but um, with the crown comes certain responsibilities and when you are crowned you need to kind of follow through what you have promised. Um, so for some for whatever reasons um, some unforeseen circumstances um, the person who was the winner um, last year um, couldn't quite um, carry on with the responsibilities and therefore in pageantry again this happens um, the crown is given to the next person or the next one um, who kind of is ready to take over so mm -hmm. then that crown was passed on to myself um, mm -hmm. and I'm now proudly representing Australia so I'm the Mrs. Universe Australia official. Um, and I take this title very seriously because as I said, that with the crown comes certain responsibilities. And if I'm representing our country, I have to make sure that I live up to the expectations of not only just the, uh, the directors or the founders who is organizing the pageant, but also I have a certain responsibility towards all the people in general. Yeah. And Dee, tell us a bit about your background, uh, uh, because you uh, you do a lot of work, you can, you wear a lot of hats. So tell us a bit about yourself. Sure. As you as you all know that, you know, life is too short to be good at one thing. So therefore, I wear multiple hats. That's right. Um, I'm a mom to begin with. Um, I've got a daughter who's 11 years old. Um, I'm a law graduate from India, but I have been pursuing HR here. So I work as a HR business partner for an international company in Sydney. And I look after New South Wales, Queensland and WA. Mm -hmm. um, not only that, I am also into modeling. So I kind of, uh, that was a passion. Um, and I also always, always wanted to be a model when I was a kid. But for whatever reasons, at that time, I could not do it. And therefore, I think it's high time for me to take it up. And um, I have been into that, too. I've, I've also been a dancer um, throughout my life. And that's something I do. Um, on top of that, I'm involved with a few charities. Um, I am kind of also actively involved. And I am an advocate of domestic violence and mental health awareness. It's because I have been through situations like this myself and therefore I feel you know if I have gone through all of that and I'm still kind of strong and standing here today um, I should be able to be an example for a lot of other women who are really kind of going through this sort of situations but are too scared to come out in public and discuss that this is what I'm going through um, mm -hmm. so I want to be an inspiration to those um, so that's Again, one other thing that I do, uh, plus recently I've started my own uh, business, which is Shaj, which is a brand that I'm trying to establish that is inclusive, that kind of caters for people with uh, from different age group, from different body types, um, because, again, it's from my personal experience. Um, I was at one point really big and then I had to lose weight for my health issues. 
Uh, mm-hmm. But I could not find a right outfit for me ever. So it was all very stable, all very kind of, you know, covered up and all uh, mm-hmm. just like a, just like a <laughs> sack. So I wanted to kind of create something different. So I'm doing this. And uh, another reason why I'm doing this is to create employment for mm-hmm. women who are in the shelters in India so that they can work in my workshop and they get mm-hmm. paid. So it's kind of giving them an employment opportunity as well. And I'm mm-hmm. also in the process of creating my foundation that is going to be, again, empowering and enabling people, and especially migrants, I would say. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, when we talk about the fashion industry here and you're into modeling mm-hmm. and things like that, how easy or challenging has that journey been? Uh, did you uh, find it easy to get breaks here or was it challenging to begin with? So what has been your journey like here in Australia, breaking into the modeling uh, scene or the fashion industry here? Thank you for that question. That's a very interesting question, Pallavi, I would say. I'll be, if I can be very honest, um, it is not easy. It is definitely not easy, even though in modeling industry, things are changing. Um, mm-hmm. People are being more inclusive. There has been kind of, you know, you do see a lot of plus size models these days. Uh, but having said that, it is still, you don't still see a lot of Indian people in the modeling industries or a lot of Indian women or women over 30s who we call matured models in the modeling mm-hmm. industry. Mm-hmm. Now, I understand that sometimes when you are married, you have your responsibilities. People sometimes give their passion or their dreams a backseat because mm-hmm. they have other responsibilities. But what I think is if you really, if you really have a dream and if you kind of pursue that and if you are kind of focused in it, you can do it. And again, another thing that I'm really kind of trying to get out there or trying to portray is there's no age for if you want to be a model. There's no age, there's no certain body type if you want to be a model or you don't have to be a specific skin color to be a model. So everyone can become a model if they really have that in them. And they're really, because what I feel is when you have this really typical models, then mm. when we are constantly kind of seeing these type of people on screen, we can't relate to them. Mm. But I feel if we can have more people on the screen that are relatable. So if I see someone and I say, oh, she's exactly like me. So yeah, if she can do it, I can too. Mm. That to me is kind of, you know, that awareness, that empowerment and kind of, you know, um, I think it's a it serves a purpose. So if you're mm. kind of launching a brand or a product and you have people that are more relatable, I think a lot of other women would like to be there and yeah. they would like to buy that product because they know that, okay, so this is someone like us and they're using it. So it could be something, it is definitely something good. So we can yeah. also wear and- that. We can also look good. Yeah. And in any case, beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. I mean, that's a known thing that uh, there are no definitive uh, criteria for, uh, you know, what may or may not be uh, attractive. It changes from, you know, time to time, place to place and things like that. So that's that's another debate, Uh, you know, but the general consensus is world over that beauty does uh, lie in the eye of the beholder. Uh, Now, uh, uh, D, uh, also want to ask you this, that, uh, you know, as you said that uh, it's been challenging, but you feel that things are changing, that that things are better than probably what they were in the past. Uh, So Mm -hmm. given, uh, you know, everything that you have gone through in your life and uh, uh, what would be your advice to, uh, you know, people who are, say, going through a difficult situation or even someone who is just contemplating, you know, whether I can become a model here, but, you know, is feeling intimidated or doesn't Mm -hmm. know. Uh, What would be your advice for someone like that? Look, I would normally say that, okay, very, very simple thing is modeling does take a little bit of attitude and kind of, you know, the right expressions. Now, it may not be everyone's cup of tea, but Mm. if someone really has that in them, irrespective of how they look or the size or the shape, if they really have what it takes to be a model, which is, you know, when the way when you're facing the camera, I think it is confidence. That's what I call it. You have to be very confident to be a model. If you are confident and if you feel that you have it in you, 
I think you should just give it a go. You should not stop or you should not be scared that, oh, I am not, I don't really fit into that modeling category, so I cannot do it. Opportunities are there. Um, it's just that we should not be intimidated. We just need to give it a go. For me, it's still a struggle because, as I said, that I am in that mature category, I'm not in my 20s anymore. So therefore, mm-hmm. I definitely do go through certain challenges and, you know, there's criteria. But having said, and also I've got a different skin tone. Um, mm-hmm. But having said that, you know, I'm still kind of trying and breaking through the stereotypes constantly and just trying. If I, and I feel that if I can do it, then I'm actually mm-hmm. creating path for others like me to do it as well. What I have done is I have never, ever stopped dreaming and I have never, ever stopped working towards what I want to do that's what I say so you have to be strong and you have to be focused yeah Dee Mukherjee thank you so much for speaking with us and all the very best for your upcoming contest thank you very much it was lovely talking to you Pallavi and I really appreciate your time and thank you Australia today